We live at the bottom of an invisible ocean called the atmosphere, a collection of different layers of gas surrounding our planet. Nitrogen and oxygen account for 99% of the gases in dry air, and only a minute portion of it consists of argon, carbon dioxide, helium, neon and other gases. Water vapors and dust are also a part of the Earth's atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere, based on its various attributes, is composed of a layered structure from the ground toward the sky. The layers are the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. The troposphere is the lowest and nearest layer to the Earth. On average, the troposphere extends from the ground to about 10 kilometers above sea level. We humans live in the troposphere and all weather develops in this lowest layer because it contains nearly all of the atmosphere's water vapor. Clouds from low-lying fogs to thunderheads to high-altitude cirrus form the troposphere. By increasing altitude, the air pressure drops and it gets colder in this layer. As the altitude increases, the air pressure gets lower and the ratio of oxygen in the atmosphere stays the same. But because of the lower pressure, the oxygen molecules are spread out, and the number of oxygen molecules in each breath decreases. At over 5.5 kilometers, there's less than half of the oxygen that's available at sea level. Once you get over 7.5 kilometers, plants no longer take root and most of animals can't breathe at all. A person experiences a blackout. The blood circulation, the respiration and the nervous system begin to collapse. It is because the oxygen levels are less than one third of what they are at sea level. For understanding this, let's take a look at the aircraft pressurized cabin system. Airplanes fly best high up in the air and people breathe best nearer to the ground. So to compensate for that low pressure and low oxygen, the airline industry invented pressurized cabins so that people can breathe easily. That's why when the flight attendants give the usual explanation, they emphasize that the travelers should put on their oxygen mask if they face an unexpected loss of cabin pressure. This is to allow the passengers to breathe properly when the outside air pressure is extremely low. The airplane's pressurized cabin will maintain a constant cabin altitude of 2.6 kilometers. Even at this artificial height, the oxygen level is about 25% less than what is available at sea level. Flying over 2.6 kilometers without modern technology can cause altitude sickness or hypoxia, a condition where the amount of oxygen reaching the body tissues gradually drops. A dramatic decrease in oxygen pressure eventually results in headache, dizziness, vomiting and difficulty in clearly thinking. This soon progresses to unconsciousness and death. Experimental studies have analyzed how long a person deprived of oxygen and affected by hypoxia is able to cope with an emergency situation. And the results show that at a height of 25,000 feet, a person can think clearly and act properly for 2 minutes at moderate activity and 3 minutes sitting quietly. These time frames drop to 45 and 75 seconds at 30,000 feet and only 18 and 30 seconds at 40,000 feet. Moreover, if we consider the Mount Everest, on the peak of it, it can take minutes just to catch your breath. That's because at an elevation of 8,848 meters, the amount of oxygen in each breath is equal to one-third of the oxygen found at sea level. The highest part of Everest, or everything above 8,000 meters, is called the death zone, where there's so little oxygen that body starts to die minute by minute and cell by cell. For this reason climbers need to get oxygen mask first on mountain above 7000 meters. Their oxygen system not only prevents them succumbing to life-threatening hypoxia, 
rather with the help of oxygen, they can move faster which allows them to spend less time in the death zone. Despite of all these measurements, Mount Everest still takes life of many climbers yearly due to intense physical activities, storms and lack of oxygen. We should be thankful for the ideal ratio of oxygen that causes us to comfortably breathe and live on this planet. Between the possible air pressures and possible oxygen proportions, looking for an optimum digital value for the existence of life, the bracket we come across is a highly limited one. And the fulfillment of so many requirements for survival within this narrow bracket certainly points to a perfect design. And for people of understanding, it is an indication that such an amazing mechanism that facilitates the existence of life on Earth is not based on a series of random events, rather it shows a deliberate design being done by a wise creator. And this fact was revealed in the Quran 14 centuries ago, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So whoever Allah wants to guide, he expands his breast to Islam, and whoever he wants to misguide, he makes his breast tight and constricted, as though he were climbing into the sky. Thus, does Allah place defilement upon those who do not believe? The indication to such an amazing fact on a time when there was no advanced technology to let people understand this concept, once again points to the divinity of Qur'an, the book that can only be the words of a wise creator.